Hey, what's up guys? This is Mario back again with another trade video. How are you guys doing? Uh, today I'm going to cover uh, another day trade. Uh, now I did end up shorting Tesla today. Uh, even though I am still a long-term investor, I just took advantage of an opportunity for a first rate type of setup uh, where when a stock, you know, moves so fast, so, so quick, uh, you know, it tends to have a little break, a little breather. And that's a high probability trade right there. So I did end up shorting for that opportunity for that breather. Um, and I'm going to go over that trade in more detail and, and actually kind of did really well on that trade. Uh, so I'm really happy with that trade. Now, overall, Tesla has been uh, moving a lot. It has to do with uh, being added to the S&P 500. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about what's behind that move and why that is important and how I was able to capitalize on not only on the long-term uh, trend of the Tesla, but also on the short-term day trade, uh, specifically the, the short that I did today on Tesla on a first-rate type of setup. Uh, so hey, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to share my screen and let's get started, guys. Hold on. Okay. So overall, you know, this the reason why I am long, I shorted actually uh, Tesla was because it's definitely been, it moved way too fast on the daily. It literally went at like one, two, three, four. Uh, four, five, six, like seven days in a row, and it, way, it moved way too fast. And so, eventually, sooner or later, they was going to take a breather. It was going to pull back. And that's what I, you know, what a lot of people call, or I call the first red day type of setup, where after a stock moves so fast a couple days in a row, eventually it's going to pull back and it's going to take a breather. It's going to take a break. And that offers a great opportunity for you to short sell that, you know, short it and then take advantage of that move and make some money on the downside. Now, overall though, I am a long-term investor in, in Tesla. I've been investing for over three years already. And I mean, the stock has been just doing amazing. A lot of it has to do with, uh, with, with the, the, the models, they, the Model Y, the Model S, the Model 3. Uh, the factories are building in, in Germany, the factory they have in, Ch in Shanghai, of course, the U.S. factory. Now they're going to build one in Austin as well. Uh, they also have one in California and Fremont. So Fremont, California. So, I mean, the overall big picture of Tesla is a very, very, very bullish. Uh, now, the reason of this recent move, you know, especially after this consolidation, the, re the, the reason behind this move, the recent move from like 450 to like 600, had to do with uh, the announcement that they're going to be added to the S&P 500. When a company is added to the S&P 500, a lot of big institutions like Fidelity, BlackRock, the Vanguard, they have to buy that company uh, because it's part of their uh, fund requirements. Uh, so I believe Tesla has had, there's around $100 billion worth of Tesla stock that needs to be bought. Uh, by the time they get added to the S&P 500, or actually I think it's going to be bought in a day or two uh, by December 21st. So they're figuring out that they're going to do it in one day or two days, uh, but that's $100 billion of institutional money buying Tesla. So of course, that's going to be very, very bullish. Uh, so Tesla definitely, I, I believe, has more potential for the upside. I'm still bullish. I actually may buy some more on this dip. Uh, but I'm going to cover the, the short-term uh, sh trade. You know, why did I end up shorting it today on that, uh, you know, that, that little, uh, you could say, breather that it had today because of that huge move that it went up so fast, so quick. Uh, so I'm going to kind of explain that. Now, what I use to determine if a stock is overextended, uh, overbought is the Bulger Bands. Uh, so I, after a couple days of green, you know, eventually the stock is going to take a breather. And after a stock breaks above the Bulger Bands, these, these lines, to me, that tells me that, hey, this stock is overextended. Uh, it's going to pull back sooner or later. And uh, today happened to be that day. Now, also, if you look at the stochastic, they're above 80. So again, anything above 80 on the, on the stochastic also gives me a little signal, hey, this stock is overextended. This thing may pull back pretty soon. So Today, uh, the, actually, the other reason why I, I really felt that today might have been the, was going to be the day for a uh, first red day was because on Friday, I felt like there was an exhaustion type of move. Uh, I had a really big move pre-market, but at the open as well, it, has a, it had also a really big move. 
but it kind of felt like it kind of it kind of blew the top you know it was like the kind of like the bubble burst you know because it, it kind of it, it kind of went straight up and it literally went below the the volume weighting average price and it kind of just stayed there you know it literally just stayed there uh so to me that kind of gave me a, a little telltale that, hey you know maybe this thing is ready to pull back you know it kind of just like boom you know went straight up and it kind of just went below v web and it just kind of like so literally just didn't do anything so to me that was a little telltale sign that, hey i think the the pullback, I think the first red day might be the next market day, which will be what's today, Monday. Now, we did have some good news in the morning uh, regarding the Shanghai plant, the Tesla Shanghai plant. Uh, the news was pretty much that, uh, and actually to kind of show you that, uh, it's actually right here. Uh, pretty much China is pretty much approved. See, here it is. So... Tesla secures approval to Beijing selling Shanghai main model Y in China, which is huge. So pretty much the Chinese government is going to allow now the model Y to be sold in China. And they already have a plant there. And actually China is going to be most likely their biggest market, uh, even bigger than the U S and a lot has to do with the Chinese government because the Chinese government is a communist government they could just say whatever they want in terms of rules and restrictions. If they say tomorrow, you know what, we're not going to allow any engine combustion cars in the streets. Tomorrow, they got to get rid of all of them and everybody has to have an electric car. Now, I believe they do have some sort of law like that. They buy 2030, all the cars in China have to be electric. There's just something like that. And uh, I mean, if you really think about that, Tesla is going to be the company that's going to benefit. And Tesla right now is the number one electric car vehicle out there. They are definitely ahead of the game. Um, and they're going to be the biggest beneficiaries of this move from combustion engine cars to electric vehicle cars. So, um, again, so that was big news. That's the reason why we had this big gap up. Um, but to me, again, that was just pretty much, uh, you know, you know, buying the rumors, starting a news type of a uh, deal going on. So I, I, I kind of added some lines of pre-market and I noticed that again, because of Friday's uh, blow up type of candle, um, and again, when I, when I consider a blow off, you know, think about it like a balloon, when you blow into a balloon, eventually it's going to blow up, you know, it's eventually it's not going to handle the pressure and it's going to blow up and, and kind of, you know, dissipate. And I feel that's what pretty much happened to Tesla today. And that's what I was expecting for Tesla today as well. So today, um, you know, it opened kind of strong, but then it kind of broke down below the, the value winning average price and it bounced off this, uh, uh, R1 and it went straight to the volume weighted average prices, uh, this purple line, and it pulled back. And my thought process was like, okay, you know, it's over, already or extended. There's some gap up in the morning. Again, I really think this is going to be seller news type of play. Uh, if it breaks below uh, 596 or below this low, it creates a new low, I think this is going to be the, the, the sell off. So I did have an order and I did short at 5, 596. Um, and it bounced a little bit, but hey, the sell-off continued. And I did cover uh, around the midpoint, and I let it do. I let Tesla do its thing. Now I actually did have some uh, more shares to kind of short around 596. I wanted to add some more actually, either at the VWAP or at 596. It didn't get there quite, you know, uh, didn't bounce that far, but that's okay. I, I let it kind of do its thing. Eventually, it kind of did sell off after this consolidation. Now I could add more. I could have resorted to add more, but I was like, you know what, I, I'm okay. You know, I want to just, I don't want to, I don't want to Tesla to, to, to beat Tesla. I don't want to keep adding, um, you know, I, I didn't feel comfortable adding because sometimes Tesla could just reverse on you out of nowhere. So I was being very conservative on this trade. I, I had a really good entry. I had a really good size. I actually went pretty decent size. So to me, I felt like I did not need to add any more risk. Uh, so that's the reason why I didn't. And I actually felt like if I would have wanted to add some risk, I would have rather add a risk here, the, the VWAP or 596. I'd rather not, you know, do it here. But, you know, I did sell off pretty nicely. I did cover some more shares at the S1 pivot level. And I was actually going to cover at S2 pivot level, but the price moved so fast. We're talking about seconds. You know, it moved so fast that I, I was pretty, not, pretty much not ready for it because as soon as I covered S1 pivot, I actually submitted an order to raise my stop at uh, around midpoint. 
And as, as I was doing that, literally Tesla just sold off like literally in seconds. And I was like, dude, I think I just missed my, my second uh, cover. So I kind of scrambled a little bit, started to cover a little bit here, cover once, cover twice. And then it literally bounced off uh, S2 and I just covered the rest. Uh, and the reason why I covered the rest, because I felt that usually S2 is a good pivot level for, for stocks to do to bounce, especially during a uh, first red day type of setup. Now, I actually, sometimes I've, I've actually gone long. I've long S2 bounces, but this time I didn't. Again, I wasn't prepared. Um, and and I'm, in a way, I'm actually glad I didn't because it actually went straight to S2 and it sold off and it went to S3. <laughs> so this time it looks like S3 was a, a better bounce. So it bounced from the S3 pivot level and it literally went straight to, to VY. It actually broke above VY. It actually went green. It went green for, for a couple minutes but then it eventually kind of dissipated and, and went right again. So that was pretty much a trade guys. So um, again, this is a first red day type of setup. It's, it is a day trade type of setup. Uh, as a reminder, I do own Tesla in my long-term account. I am a long-term investor, been investing for the last three years. Um, again, this, this short trade, uh, uh, short trade doesn't, doesn't mean that, you know, Tesla's gonna pull back and go to zero. No, this is a, this is just a high probability trade to take advantage of the volatility because again tesla's been moving up so much uh, and just to show you again that the chart so fast that eventually it needs to take a breather so i took advantage of that pullback on that breather and made some money on the short side uh, so that's pretty much it guys i hope you guys learned something from this video don't forget to smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you have any questions hey ask them below and i'll answer all your questions at the youtube comments thank you very much guys have a good one take care